Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to episode number 14 of Empoli Career Mode. Today we're going into the January transfer window. So let's get into it, see what will happen. And already we've got ourselves an email on the first day of the transfer window. Oh, that'll be undersea going, won't it? Oh, is there's another one. It's taking a while. Stop. We've got a youth squad report. Undersea has left the club. Transfer market invitation in information, and we need to renew these two players' contracts. First, let's look at this report. Mariani continuing to look like a a future boss. Oh, well, he's ready to be signed as well. Let's sign him up. He's turned up. He's turned sixteen. Let's get him into the squad. He might sit on the bench for Terracciano who hasn't done much this season, just sit on the bench. But Romano is almost 60 rated as well, with a very good potential. Rossi, still there with a decent potential, but rather poor overall rating. But let's quickly renew these two players' contracts. So, and with Untersee out of the side, Castagnetti might find himself playing more often than not. And we've also got Vaselli who have been training his passing so he can step in there if needed as well. We've got a transfer offer here for Zaych. He's been one of our better players this season. At 1.7 million, it's a very decent one at that. We'll try and get a bit more money for him. I think about 2.5 and I'll be willing to sell him. The question is, who would be his replacement if that does happen? There's always Marco Sau who we can go in for again. Let's try 2.8 to start with. Oh, and they've matched the 2.8 price tag. Well, I didn't expect that, but that's good. We'll be getting some more money in for him. Now we've got a transfer offer for Vaselli from Pescara. He's not one of our first team players. So I would be um, willing to accept one of these offers for him. Pescara, we bought for Nazi Air off them then, and now they're trying to get Vaselli off us. He's higher rated. We'll try and get 2.8 for him as well. But they only want 1.95. Hmm. I think I'll take 2.2 or so. But we'll try and get 2.5. 2.15 here. Interesting. Maybe if we can squeeze an extra 50k out of them. That would be good. 2.2, 2, my final offer. And they're happy to match it, so we have another deal done. Good stuff. Milan of San Diego Costa for almost 50 million. That's very interesting. But here, Turkey have offered us international management. No thank you. Bruno's got us a monthly scouting update. Not sure about him. Not sure about him. Not sure about him. Not sure about him. Is there anyone 66 to 90? Keeps scouting 68 to 92 with a. Decent overall. His overall is also pretty decent. 
with Giacomo Greco and Fabio Guidi with a bit of a higher potential. They're two of the main targets. He's not good enough. He's not good enough. Look at that. Terrible overall. That's also a terrible overall. He's got a decent overall. We'll keep him. We've already got a few keepers. We don't need him. Keep scouting that guy. Don't need him. Keep scouting that guy. He's got a high overall at just 15. And we'll keep scouting that guy because we don't have any wingers. And Zaych has sold to Palmer for 2.8 mil. So that means we'll be needing a backup cam or a new cam. There's Rodriguez, but then we've got Russo. And he's not really been good enough in the match that I played with him. So I'll be looking for somebody else a bit better. And we've got an email here. It's Lolo's back from injury. It is Lolo, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But I, he won't play today. He'll just um, sit out for this game. Don't want to re-aggravate the injury or anything. But... Without further ado, let's get into the first match. Just fix up the side. Let's go and play Citadella. Try and catch up Bar to Bari. Oh, damn it. I forgot to give Pascal back the captain's armband. Oh, well. Citadella sitting in 15th place. We should be winning this game. But... It's away from home, and that's always going to be a bit difficult, but not snowing today, which is good news. And we're the highest goal scorers in the league. They're the lowest goal scorers in the league. How about that? Hopefully we can put a few past them today, and we're really decent defensively as well, so I think we should be winning this game comfortably. Shouldn't be conceding, at least. But here is their lineup. No one that I really recognise, which has become a bit of a pattern. But a 4-3-1-2 formation. I think that we played someone recently who played this. I can't quite remember who it was. It may have been Pescara in the last episode. You guys will have to correct me in the comments. But anyway, let's go into the match. Here's our lineup. The only change from the last match is Rodriguez in for Zaych. Actually, we rotated a bit the last match, so yeah, it's normal lineup. Antasi's not there because he's sold. Same with Zaych, that's why Rodriguez is stepping in. But I, do I doubt Castagnetti might stay there, but I doubt um, Rodriguez will stay there for the rest of the season, but he's got a chance to impress here. Let's head into the game. Here's Rodriguez coming forward. Looks for Caputo. Back to Rodriguez. Rodriguez still going. Oh, it's blocked. And comfortable for the keeper in the end. Here they come, he's beaten Romagnoli now, Fornazier's got to get across. Great block, he's been really good so far today. Uh-oh, that could be a penalty. And it is two, Pascal's going to get a yellow. I, I would have won the ball, but it bounced. If it was on the ground, he would have got it. And now they're giant strikers stepping up to try and score the penalty. It's literary. He's taking a huge run up. Bottom right. Oh, he's gone the other way. It's 1-0 to Citadella. And what did I say about keeping a clean sheet? That's probably the only way they can score from a penalty. Well, that's rather frustrating. Literary, he is, it's his 10th of the season, considering they're, like, the lowest scoring team in the division. I'm surprised that he's scored 10. Good tackle by Sacco. 
Play out field looking for Caputo. Caputo still going. Caputo. He turns. Looks for Donnarumma. Oh, I, th I thought he scored. The way, the form he's been in this season, you'd expect him to put that away. But he's missed. And still 1-0. But here is Sacco, who does like to make infield runs. And he finds Pascal. And Pascal takes it inside to Rodriguez. Oh, that's a penalty, surely. Not given. Castagnetti to Creco. He's on his left foot. Blocked. Headed. Oh, Caputo. He was probably offside anyway. And they come away with the ball again. Oh, bloody hell. Littery is like a giant. Sacco does well, coming across all the way over here. He's such a good player, Sacco. He's been probably our best signing this season. Through ball, looking for Luca Creco. Great. Oh, that's a penalty, surely. What? How is that not a penalty? That's two penalty shouts that should have been penalties not given by the referee, and they get a penalty. Now, now they're coming up. They won't change to Romagnoli. And now they've given a penalty up this end. I don't believe it. He's going to give Romagnoli a yellow as well. This should be two penalties each. But no, that he only likes to give them penalties. Literary to score his second of the game. Staying down the middle, and this time he's gone bottom right. It's 2-0. And we really need to do better in the second half. Come on. It started at the end of the first half, though. Sacco. Oh, Della Rocca's won it. Upfield. Oh, that was a terrible header. And there's half time. A very disappointing half, and a very... Poor refereed half. Let me think what to do at half time. We're bringing on Triore. Rodriguez has been very bad, but that's all we'll do. Let's go. Let's get these two goals. Oh, played through. He's in on the wing. Into the box. Sacco, get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Save. By Providel. And I think we've pushed it out for a goal kick. No, it's a corner. For goodness sake. I'll get this away. Pasca P Providel makes a great save. And that dude will be really wondering how he missed that headed chance right then. Literary won't get his hat trick, but we need to make substitution here. Esposito on for Castagnetti will drop Creco back. We'll also bring on Mishad Lidze for Caputo. And that's all three of our changes. Is Pascal still on the pitch? Yeah, he is, isn't he? We'll aim at the mass of people here towards Romagnoli! Oh, it's gone over the bar. What a chance. That would have been the perfect way to bring it back, but he's headed it too high. Win that header. Well up. Mishad Lidze, that was the worst touch I've ever seen, but it's worked out nicely because here's Donnarumma! Saved again, and that guy's going to keep it in. And we're not going to get to it first. Brilliant. How does this happen? Great tackle though. But no, they get it straight back. Pascal's out of position. Creco. Creco does well. That was oh, that was not who it was meant to go to, but Fornazier, no, he doesn't win the header. It wasn't even Littery who beat him to it. Oh, won't let me change the right player, Pascal's not goal side, and that is one of the worst scuffed efforts from them.
But we're just not playing well. Maybe I shouldn't have sold Zage. Hope that doesn't screw us up completely. Oh my... What was that? The game just doesn't like me today. It's... That's like the third or fourth time that I've tried to pass it to someone and it's gone to a completely wrong player. Pick it up, field. Win that header. It's hardly winning the header, but Fornazier, how have you not... How do you not tackle him? Sackos. Oh, for goodness sake, I said clear it. Goodness, he didn't score again. Quick, get it up here. We're not going to win, are we? We're going. We're not even going to get a draw. We cannot win a header. There it is. We've bloody lost two 0 to Citadella, the worst goal scoring team in the division, have beaten us, and we managed to not score. And we've dropped out of the playoffs, uh, no, not of the playoffs, the automatic promotion spots as well. This is just going brilliantly, isn't it? And Vaselli is gone as well. Now. You added another 1.5 mil to the budget. What's it at now? Almost 5 mil, that's... Looking healthy. We've got some emails. A loan offer for Jakopovic. I would be happy to accept it. It's from Regensburg. They're probably either from Germany's third tier or from Austria. Di Lorenzo wants to play, but that won't be happening. So we take on Perugia. I think they're around about the playoffs. They're just three points out, but we need a win and we could jump back into the playoffs because now we're down in fourth place or something. But let's head into this match against Perugia. Hopefully we can come away with a victory. Hopefully we play better than last time. We're at home today. Hopefully we'll perform better in front of our home crowd. No snow as well, which is an improvement on the last few home games. But, hopefully, we can come away with a victory today. But here is our lineup. Robertel starts in goal. Sacco, Fornazia, Romagnoli, Pascal, Castagnetti, Creco, Lolo back from injury, and Russo is getting a start at Cam ahead of Traore and... Rodriguez, but our strike partnership stays the same with Caputo and Donnarumma up top. Here is their team. They've got a Korean dude, Han Kwang Song, and they're playing 4-3-1-2, which is what they last team, Citadella, played against us, and we couldn't score, but hopefully we can score today and not make it two goalless games in a row, but Let's get going. Kick off here. All that wide looking for Pascal. This is already what I like to see. Here's Donnarumma. He's got Caputo. Oh, Caputo! Oh, he's won it back though. And here's a chance. We'll try and chip the keeper. It's worked! A pretty cheap goal, but a goal nonetheless. And we have a 1-0 lead just three minutes into the first half. And it's Francesco Caputo who pops up with the goal. If only we'd done that three minutes into the last game as well. Poor touch by the defender. Caputo gets it and then chips it over the on-rushing keeper. And gets the ball into the back of the net. The keeper probably could have done a bit better, but I don't think he was expecting the chip shot. And we pick up a goal. It's 1-0. And I'll just wait and see how many that is for Caputo in this season. It is nine for Caputo. Twelve less than Donnarumma. But still a good season he's having. Now Lolo. Out looking for Sacco. The ball is on for Caputo. He could be in for two. 
Oh, he's put it over. What a chance for Caputo to make it 2-0. But he's put a little too much power on it and it's gone over the bar. Looking for Lolo. Hope he's right-footed. I don't think he is. That was a rather poor shot. Puts it well over. Some good dribbling, though. I need to learn what foot he is. Otherwise, we're screwed. And he will be do that a lot more than often. Creco's left-footed, I know that, but I'm not sure about Lolo. Now, Sacco. We've got a lot of names that end in O in the team today. Lolo, Caputo, Sacco, Russo. Is there anyone else? I don't think there is. But they're in here, and it's 1-1. One, one. Someone tripped over one of their, their, our own players. And I'm not sure if... Yeah, no, that their dude tripped him up. That should have been a foul. And so he was out of position, and then Pascal was nowhere, and that guy took it first time and put it into the back of the net to make it 1-1. One, one. And now we're... But we're coming back again, because that's a good header from Lolo. Here's Creco. Did I count Creco in the names that end in O? I'm not sure. Russo, he could be in to score his first goal! And he is! It's 2-1, and the youngster has scored his first goal for Empoli. Is this the first we see of a future star of the club? Let's hope so. Great piece of passing play. Donnarumma to Caputo, through ball for Russo. And maybe he can be the new Zage. I'm not sure if he's left-footed or right-footed, but he's finished that nicely on his left. I think he is left-footed. Although, I'm, I could quite possibly be wrong anyway. His first goal in his career for Matteo Russo. And it comes to put us back in the lead against Perugia. Here they come, though, down the wing. Pascal can't block the cross. Providel does well. Castagnetti underneath it. R Russo's underneath that one, but he is not strong enough to hold off the big dude over there. And here they're passing it round a bit. There's a shot on, and it's well blocked by Fornazier, I think that was. Or it may well have been Romagnoli. No, that was Romagnoli. Oh, that might have hit him on the hand. Oh, well, it was in front of his body, so it can't really be a handball, really. But that's fallen nicely for Caputo. It's rolling around, but they end up getting it. Russo, can he win that? No, he can't. Oh, no, Fornazzi is out of position. Oh, that was close. From Han, the Korean. He doesn't look, he doesn't look that Korean. No, oh, he tried the finesse shot. That was always going wide, to be fair. Greco, Pascal, Donnarumma, Russo! Oh no, that was actually Caputo, or was it Russo? I'm not sure. And they want to show that again, I don't know why. Oh, it was a corner, that's why it was so bad of a header. But he, anyway, let's pop that into the mixer. That's too close to the keeper, he always seems to do that. And I always seem to knock over the keeper, trying to go and win the header. But here is that story about Jakupovic, who might be out on going out on loan. And not very well. Don't know how you can lose it very well, though. Pascal. Oh, how has he not won that? Please be offside. If he wasn't offside, he has completely missed a sitter. He's taken control of it, done some sort of sneaky Ronaldo chop, and then somehow missed straight in front and he wasn't even offside though that was probably wrong but how how did he miss that but now I've given it away I'd rather hold on to half time with this score line if that would be perfectly possible he's not won it in there in the box please don't give a penalty oh they have given another penalty how many penalties are we gonna get given against us this episode, this is the third one, Romagnoli penalised, how? He won the ball, did he? Oh, 
And now Han Quang Song has a chance to... He's left. Oh, he's, that's a very good penalty, to be fair. But it's 2-2. Two, two, and it's another crappy penalty. And we can't survive to half-time with the score at 2-1. There is half-time. And we're going to need to rethink how we're going. The, the first goal, Caputo steals it off him, chips the keeper, that was a nice one. I think we're going to bring on Della Rocca for Creco. But that's all we'll do. So, Alright, let's go. Here is... Um, that might be Donnarumma on the ball. Yeah, it is Donnarumma on the ball. He finds Della Rocca. That is a beautiful ball. An impact already from Della Rocca. And Pascal wins a corner. Alright, I'm not liking the outswingers. I, w I want to go with a right-footed taker. Who's our best right-footed taker? It is, in fact, Lolo, who is right-footed. So that just was a, a completely terrible shot before. But Russo's done well, very well there to win that header. He's got the ball back. Here is Lolo. He's got the overlap from Pascal, who's in the box now. Chips it into the centre. Probably should have put it along the ground, though. And now here they come away on the counter. And Russo's trying to win it off him. And he gets it out for a throw. And well up. Sacco should get that away. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he did he didn't do well enough. And we get away with another one, I swear. If we end up losing two games in a row, this is going to be really annoying. Now they're on the ball again. It's laid off. It's played through. Great holding up by Fournazier. Can he delay the goal? Well, can he prevent it is the question I would rather know. Providel makes a save. Great stuff from Fournazier there. And Sacco, who made that last-ditch block on the line. Sacco's being chased. He'll just turn around in a circle to get away from that dude. Here is Pascal. Looking for Lolo. Lolo surely for 3-2, and he's done it. Caputo with another assist. That's his second of the game to go along with his goal. Through ball for Lolo, who got the wrong, the right side of the defender, I should say. And smashed it in on his return to the first team from injury. Great stuff from Lorenzo Lolo. Hopefully he doesn't get injured again. Because he is a very important part of the team. His first goal in the league as well. That show you, shows you how much... He's been injured this season. But 3-2, and there's just... What's that? 17 minutes? Something I would like... I might train Russo's dribbling, because that's something that needs working. Providell, I expected him to come! And it's 3-3. Right afterwards, and it's Seri. Why? Why? He started coming, and so I just stopped with Romagnoli, and then he just stopped, and he didn't even try and dive and save it. And now we've got to go and score again. Don't lose. Don't lose it! Oh! And it's 3-3 at the end of the game. Could have easily been 4-3. I don't know what's happened to us. We just can't seem to defend anymore. Like, we were defending pretty well at the start of the season. At one time, we had a um, the best defensive record in the league. But we probably don't have that anymore. And we're in fourth place, three points away from Kiavari in the automatic promotion spots. Oh, Jakupovic doesn't want to go out on loan. India have offered us an international management offer. 
No thank you. Jack and Povich doesn't want to go out on loan, and we've got a transfer offer from Misha Lidze of 4.75. We'll try and get 5, and then we might be able to bring in Marco Sauer. This time, instead of completely screwing everything up like last time we did. We'll try and get 5.5 like we got out of Udinese. He's not the starting strikers. Well, he's not one of the starting strikers. And we're going to get 5.5 for him. That is very good. Now Spal have tried to sign pa Pascal, but he is not going anywhere, as he is our captain. And a long-time servant of the club. I will not sell him. And we've got s eight emails. There's probably a few scout reports, a press conference that I don't care about. Richard Lidze is gone to Genoa. Alright, Ruchinia, what is he? 68, that's actually pretty decent. Louis Farina, 70, also decent. Leandrino, 69 rated, also decent. Joao Nav Navias, 71 rated. Moreno Const Costanzo, he's 71 rated. He's older, I think he is. And Najib Am Amari is 68 rated. He could be a bit of a cheaper option and one who's already adapted to the league. But let's take a look at how our budget is looking now. 8.8. .8. Sal will have to be at the end because we need to bring in a centre-back and an attacking midfielder first. But who to go for? Campos is the highest rated, but he's also quite a bit older. Novias is the highest rated and he's younger and he's got a very low wage unlike Campos. I think we might go for Novias. Ruchinha's younger but he's got a higher... no he doesn't have a higher wage. But he could be a cheaper option. Farina's got a higher wage than most of the others and he's all recently joined so he will not be the player we've getting. Mourinho Constanzo's got a release clause, but he's a bit older. And Amari's recently joined, so we won't be getting Amari. I think we're going to go for Navias. Try and bring him in at Cam. Russo did decently, but we're still looking for... Um, he, he'll be more of a future option rather than an option right now. Navias... Are, current value of 3.2 so I might want to start with 3 mil but I don't so because I don't want to make them storm out we sold Zage for 2.8 so I'll start with that hopefully they don't walk out straight away because that would be very disappointing Three point three five. That is very acceptable. But we always want to get a few pennies off the deal. So let's bring it down to valuation of three point two. And then we've still got a good four mil for the centre back and maybe a replacement striker if we would want to look for one and there we go Navias deal accepted let's try and get him in right now hey the only problem is he could he is not as well suited already to the style of football we play in Serie B and we saw how that affected um Rodriguez, but that was, he was from the Swiss League. Navias is from the Portuguese League, the same league Sacco came from, and he's been absolutely brilliant for us. 
so far this season. He wants a crucial squad role. I suppose we can give him that. So hopefully, Navias can turn out to be just as good as Sacco. Three-year contract. I can. I am perfectly happy to accept that. Don't want to release clause, that's good, I suppose. No point losing him or something like that. Ooh, that's a bit of two hefty bonuses and a much bigger and quite a big wage rise as well. It only adds up to two two five thousand, but I'd rather not have that appearances bonus. And I'll try and get the wage down to seven point five, and I'll offer him a signing bonus up to one seventy to make him want to accept it. Let's see what they want. They want 7,800 per week. I mean, we've got a decent wage budget, but we always should have a bit extra in case... Actually, no one else's contract is expiring at the end of the season, but we may as well try and get a 50 bucks a week off it if they decide to go back to 7,800 then I'll accept it. If they don't, then good, they'll accept this one. Oh, they want to go back to 7800, all right. I may as well just accept it and get him in. That's good. We've got new signing, Joao Navias. I'm probably saying that terribly. But, oh well, alright. We won't be getting Campos, or Ricinha, or Leandrinho, or Constanzo. Costanzo. I'm trying to say that, but... Let's jump. Let's pop him into the squad. Where is he? Navias, on the bench. Oh, only two-star skills. Three-star weak foot, right-footed. He can also play at centre and midfield. Finishing not very good, but he's got good free kicks on him if we ever have to get rid of Pascal if he's getting too old. His long shots are looking very good with high shot power. He's got some nice passing, dribbling not too good. What else have we got? Not much high sprint speed. Maybe we can try and train his finishing, I think. But that'll be it for today's episode. I'll see you in the next one where we'll need to bring in a centre-back and a striker, probably, with the remaining four mil or so we've got left. We might, we might even make a few more sales, but and we'll also play a Scully and hopefully get ourselves back into the automatic promotion spots, which Pescara now sit in after they played bef the day before us and beat Palmer. So, well, without further ado, we'll have to end the episode there. Hopefully you have enjoyed. If you did, drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you.